Ahoy there, mateys. Are ye ready for a joke? Aye, aye. Shiver me timbers. What did the ocean say to the pirate? I don't know. What? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> now, how much did the pirate pay for his hook and peg leg? How much? An arm and a leg. <laughs> how many doubloons does it take to buy a snack? How many? I don't know either. Let's find out. Hello. Is the Bible. The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, and dreams, and together they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of His amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything that we see. God continued to speak through a family that He chose to show His love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected Him, they were taken into exile, and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending His Son Jesus to earth to fix our friendship with Him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God. Followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus it spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again, which is really a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much He loves you.
Let's raise the sails, go out to sea And find the treasure buried deep We know it doesn't need a key It lives inside of you and me Good news! Good news, better than gold Better than anything you've been told Yo-ho, God gave his son This good news is for everyone Good news, better than gold Better than anything you've been told Yo-ho, God gave his son This good news is for everyone Yo-ho, away we go Go tell everybody that we know Yo-ho, away we go Away we go with a yo-ho-ho God loved his people, the Israelites, and he had taken care of them, given them what they needed, and even rescued them from people who wanted to hurt them. God knew what was best for his people, and he wanted to be their only leader, but they begged him for a king. So God gave them what they asked for. Some of the kings who ruled over God's family were good, like King David, who was a man after God's own heart and wrote most of the book of Psalms in the Bible. And then there was Josiah, who became king when he was just eight years old and taught all the people in his kingdom to treasure God's word. But there were also some bad kings who did terrible things, who didn't believe in or obey God. One of those was King Ahab. During King Ahab's time, there was a prophet named Elijah who heard special messages from God. God sent Elijah to challenge and warn King Ahab that there would be no rain or dew in the kingdom for the next few years because of his disobedience. Then God told Elijah to go and stay near a brook, which is just a small stream. God promised that Elijah would still have water to drink and that ravens would bring him food. Just like God had said, the ravens brought Elijah bread and meat in the mornings and the evenings, and he drank water from the brook. But soon the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. So God spoke to Elijah and told him to go into a town and a widow would be there to feed him. So Elijah did what God said. He found a woman gathering sticks and asked her for a jar of water and a piece of bread. But the woman said that she only had enough flour and oil to make one last meal for her and her son. She was sure that they were going to die. Elijah told the woman to not be afraid he told her to go home, make the meal, but to first make a small loaf of bread for him. He said that God had promised that her flour and oil would not run out. So the woman went away and did as Elijah said. And sure enough, her flour and oil never ran out. Each day, Elijah, the widow, and her son had plenty of food to eat. A while later, the woman's son became very sick and died. Elijah cried out to God and prayed, Lord God, Give this boy's life back. God heard Elijah's cry and brought the boy back to life. When the woman saw this, she said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God. I know that the message that you have brought from the Lord is true. Elijah knew that whatever God said was true. And now the woman knew that too. And once King Ahab obeyed, God sent the rain again. Like Elijah, the widow, and King Ahab, we can know that God's words are true for us as well. And just like God's words proved true for Elijah, they also proved true when God sent Jesus. The people wanted a king, and God promised that he would send them the best king, Jesus, who is named the king of all kings. Over and over again throughout God's story, we see that what God said would happen, happened. And that's why we can trust that all of the words that he gave to people to write down in the Bible are his words and that they are all true. God's word is true. God's word is true. Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. God's word is true. Get on your feet and sing along! Let's learn the books of the Bible! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, 
Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody! Hebrews and James! Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah! We did it! That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. What do you see? How to be a pirate. Today we will teach our potential pirate some important history of his newfound piratey life. Excellent! Pirates have always been known for their accessories. Now, you may think that a pirate wore his peg leg for fun, or that a hook hand was just for looks. But sometimes on the job accidents would happen and pirates are great problem solvers. So they'd fashion a peg or a hook from what they could find. And you may have seen a pirate every now and again sporting a gold earring. Again, not just for looks. Pirates believed the earrings would keep them from getting seasick. But a pirate's best accessory isn't his peg leg or gold earring. A pirate's best companion is his treasure map. And did you know that some Bibles have maps? The maps show you real places where the things you read in the Bible truly happen. You can even visit a lot of those places today and see for yourself what the Bible says is real and true. Like the stream in the Valley of Elah where David picked up stones to kill Goliath. You can stand there and pick up stones yourself. And as you do, you can see the hill where Goliath was defeated. You can ride a boat on the Sea of Galilee like Jesus' disciples and imagine Jesus walking on the top of those same waters like he really did one night. And you can even visit the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus really prayed and was arrested before he took the punishment for our sins. You can travel to so many of the places you read about in the Bible and when you do, you'll understand even more about how God's Word is true. Arr! We found the treasure! God's Word is like pure gold! And it goes like this. Your Word to me, that's the Bible. Your servant, well that's me, Captain Goldtooth, but it's also you, me crew. It's like pure gold! I treasure what you say. Well, shiver me timbers! That verse can be found in Psalm 119. All right, me crew, let's see if you can say it in your best pirate voice. Repeat after me, Captain Goldtooth. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold. I treasure what you say. Psalm 119, 140. 
Well, shiver me timbers! You'll have God's word buried in your heart in no time. All right, me crew, get up and dance like a pirate. your Bible, there are three questions you can ask. The first question is what? What did we read about in God's Word today? Did we read about A, Elijah, a widow and King Ahab, B, Captain Hook's run-in with a crocodile, or C, Jacob and Esau? The answer is A. We read about how God proved himself to be true and trustworthy over and over again to Elijah, the widow, and King Ahab. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is, so what, or why does this matter to me? Well, it's important for us to understand that since God's words were true for Elijah, the widow, and King Ahab, they're true for us too. When you read the promises in God's word, you can know they were true for the people in the Bible and they're true for you every single day. And the last question to ask is, now what? Now, what do we do with what we've learned? Well, there are lots of things we can do. We can crack open our Bibles and read every word so we'll know all of the promises God has for us. We can pray and ask God to help write those truths on our hearts so we can remember them even when we don't have our Bibles handy. And we can tell others about how much God loves them and how God's word is full of true promises for them too. So remember, when you read your Bible, you can ask what, so what, Now what? Before you go, get real quiet and let's pray together. Hey God, we are so thankful that every word in the Bible is true. And we can trust that you will always do what you say you will do. Please help us remember to look in your word when we need to know the truth about something. You're the best and we love you. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's Word is true.